from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, July the 24th, 2023. Israel's Knesset passed the highly contentious reasonableness bill blocking its courts from reviewing decisions made by the government that it views as problematic. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed the Israeli public tonight after the passage earlier today, saying the legislation was necessary to allow an elected government to rule. Netanyahu stressed, despite everything, my friends, we will continue to seek talks and agreements, saying the coalition will turn to the opposition in the next few days for talks to reach, he said, a general agreement on everything saying it could be done by the end of November. Netanyahu also stressed that the IDF must remain above any political disagreement and called for unity, saying we have one nation, one home, one people. On the eve of Tisha B'Av, just a few days away, we must safeguard these above all else. The bill passed its final vote in the Knesset today after a last-ditch compromise deal failed to be reached. It follows 29 weeks of unprecedented protests, fierce opposition, and deep divide within Israeli society. Israel's Knesset gave final approval to the law today, 64 votes in favor, zero against, as opposition members boycotted the final round in protest after voting against earlier readings of the bill today. A 30-hour debate on the bill began yesterday and continued through today, leading up to that final vote of the law, which is seen as the first major bill in the judicial overhaul. Justice Minister Yariv Levin, one of the proponents of the law, said we have taken the first step in a historic process to correct the judicial system. National Unity Party leader Benny Gantz condemned the law's passage, saying a majority in the Knesset that wants agreements was defeated by extreme Knesset members who decided to change our identity, who want to take us to an abyss of hatred, to divide us and to turn us on each other. Gantz saying everything approved here will be canceled and erased from the Book of Laws sooner or later. A unity prayer was held at the Kotel, the Western Wall, yesterday ahead of the vote with people on both sides of the issue taking part, waving Israeli flags and singing songs like Yerushalayim shel Zahav, Jerusalem of Gold, and Ein li Eretz Acheret, I have no other country, and Israel's national anthem, Hatikva, the hope, which could also be heard along the human chain that was formed, stretching the two miles from the Kotel to the Knesset. <laughs> Culminating with a reported nearly 100,000 people taking part in the anti-overhaul rally, last night. And massive protests took place outside the Knesset today as well, with some violent clashes with police who used water cannons against protesters. There were several arrests and several people injured. Those protesting the judicial overhaul vowing that after the vote today, they will continue the fight. And hundreds of people, including many Israeli Americans, marched across New York City's Brooklyn Bridge yesterday in protest of the judicial overhaul and to show support and solidarity with protesters in Israel. The White House responded to the reasonableness law's passage today. Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre saying that as a lifelong friend of Israel, President Biden has publicly and privately expressed his views that major changes in a democracy to be enduring must have as broad a consensus as possible. It is unfortunate that the vote today took place with the slimmest possible majority. We understand talks are ongoing and likely to continue over the coming weeks and months to forge a broader compromise, even with the Knesset in recess. The United States, she said, will continue to support the efforts of President Herzog and other Israeli leaders as they seek to build a broader consensus through political dialogue. 
Well, some Jewish organizations here in the U.S. responded to the news today. The American Jewish Committee saying it was profoundly disappointed over the passage of the reasonableness law, which it said was pushed through unilaterally by the governing coalition amid deepening divisions in Israeli society, as evidenced by the hundreds of thousands of Israelis who have taken to the streets. We continue to support President Herzog's efforts to promote national dialogue and call on the parties to resume talks under his auspices. The Anti-Defamation League saying it was deeply disappointed, also referencing the upcoming Tisha B'Av, saying this week when Jewish people around the world fast in commemoration of the solemn day of Tisha B'Av, it's incredibly painful to see such deep divisions in our community. We strongly urge the Israeli government to refrain from moving additional judicial overhaul bills forward and focus instead on working together with Israeli civil leadership to build consensus and cohesion aimed at healing the wounds within Israeli society. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Monday, July the 24th at 7 o'clock. It's Cantor Joseph Malavani in concert. At 8, Abigail Pogreman sits with Avram Malotek, co-founder of BASE, a pluralistic home-centered outreach program for Jewish young adults. At 8.30, Miriam Azagui talks about how she educates about the Holocaust, discusses the beauty of Judaism, and shares her life as an Orthodox Jew with millions through social media. At 9, it's part two of Tal Kinen on L'Chaim. At 10, a look at the phenomenon of Holocaust fatigue. And coming up next, it's Good Week Israel. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, July the 24th, 2023. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well.